Hey YouTube, so uh, I wanted to do a build tour uh, of my Reptile V550 uh, quadcopter. Um, I'm calling it the Dragon Quad version 2, I guess, um, since it's an off-brand frame anyway. Uh, the frame is uh, obviously, a, if you're familiar with it, a knockoff of the TBS Discovery uh, frame. Um, the main differences are these arms are pretty they're fairly soft, I guess, compared to DJI arms. Um, they've also uh, swapped the location between where the GoPro sits and where your cameras sit. Um, this is also not nearly as ideal. They do give you two plates here, and the idea is, I guess, you, draw, you drill your own holes or whatever. Um, I did a bunch of reading online, and apparently the best way to do it is with some uh, earplugs. So I went ahead and did that. Uh, the other thing I did is apparently too much vibration on your transmitter will cause some um, um, some lines and stuff. I guess there's maybe some like little crystals or something in there. Uh, again, this is the uh, Spironet uh, Circular Polarized Immersion RC, 5.8 gigahertz antenna and the Immersion RC 600 milliwatt, 5.8 gigahertz transmitter. Uh, there's my Hero 3 White. I only have one, uh, same one that's on the uh, build tour of my Bixler 2. This is actually the same exact antenna as well. I don't have two antennas, one for each aircraft yet, so um, eventually I do want to do that. Um, these are the uh, Sunny Sky um, 980KV uh, motors uh, uh, built for 3S. I'm actually very happy with them, um, but uh, so far though they feel really solid. Um, these are all balanced as best I could. Uh, except this one. I think one of them looked like it didn't need to be balanced. So um, I wouldn't say they're quite as good as the Tiger Motors. I guess the Tiger Motors balance really well, but uh, um, I'm still pretty happy with these. I mean, this set of four um, cost me 75 bucks, 80 bucks on uh, eBay uh, shipped from China. So very happy with those. Um, of course, these are the infamous uh, Grotner uh, E-Props. Uh, these are uh, 10 by five or 25 by 12.5 centimeter um, props. And I'm very, very happy with them. These are all balanced as, to the best of my ability. Um, this is probably not the best tape. I had never balanced props before, but they seem to do okay. So um, on the bottom here is the uh, Turnigy plush 25 amp speed controller. Um, I do eventually want to move up to the um, Simon K flashed uh, ESCs that are available pretty much um, yeah, not all over the place, but they're fairly easy to find. Um, and uh, uh, so I do want to move up to those. I guess that'll help a lot. Um, I can turn my gains up a lot higher. I get a lot more authority. Um, uh, in there is the uh, infamous uh, Hobby King KK 2.0 with the 1.5 firmware. I'm uh, very happy with it for, for 30 bucks, especially on the 1.5 firmware for 30 bucks. Um, you honestly, in my opinion, cannot beat it for a quad controller, especially one with a or multi rotor controller, especially one with a little built on screen. I mean, no other uh, uh, multi rotor control board uh, has a screen to my knowledge. And, and if any of them do, they certainly don't have a $30 price tag. So, um, great place to start to get into quads and multi rotors in general. You can also flash these and use them in airplanes and all kinds of stuff. So, they're pretty cool. Uh, moving along, this is the cheapy uh, Orange RX 9-channel uh, receiver. Um, the, one of the main reasons I went with this particular radio, uh, receiver is because it was fairly cheap. I think it was like $23, um, and it has a full-wave antenna, um, and I wanted to um, uh, polarize it straight up um, so it's the same orientation as the antenna on my radio. Um, I do eventually want to go 433 megahertz, but I'm, I'm waiting until I get my uh, ham license to do that. And then, of course, back here we can see a GPS receiver. Uh, this GPS receiver uh, works really well. Um, warm boot is 30 seconds or less. Uh, cold boot's about five minutes. And uh, for it to reacquire, it does take a little while, but once it does, you give it a chance. It'll lock in all eight satellites, and it works great. Um, Let's see, it's a little hard to see. I'll show you the underside in a minute. Uh, this is the current sensor, um, which actually came with XT60s uh, pre-soldered on it. 
And uh, underneath this little lump here is the actual OSD. This is the um, Skylark uh, Easy Skylark Tiny OSD 3. I'm very, very happy with it. Um, as a basic OSD, not even basic, I mean, it shows you, um, it shows you all the information you wanna know, current draw, GPS location, speed, um, uh, heading, um, does a pretty good job of showing you where you are. Um, and uh, I'm really happy with it. So, um, and I'll show you that here in just a moment. And then finally, here is a 4,000 milliamp hour, uh, 25C, only 25C, uh, Zippy Compact 3-cell. Um, I do eventually want to move to 4-cell, but for now I'm still running 3-cell. Um, always on a budget, so, you know, can't go super crazy. So spinning this back around, I'm going to turn the, uh, the, the camera's lamp on. So there is the actual um, Skylark Easy OSD. Uh, it's very hard to see, and uh, I've got it all bundled in there as tightly as I could. Uh, there's the bottom of the current sensor. Uh, works great. And, um, and then, of course, there's my actual... That's the Hobby King distribution board that I just pulled off my old X-Quad. Um, there's the KK board, uh, KK 2.0 board. And, uh, of course, if you look way down in there... Uh, boy, can you see it? Uh, it's very hard to see, but kind of... You see that little black line uh, going off the left side of the screen, or off from the center, I mean. Uh, that is shrink tubing, and that's the wiring harness that I built. Um, I originally ran the transmitter, uh, which is starting to get a little warm since it's not being exposed to air. Um, I originally ran the transmitter off its own battery, and the transmitter was uh, over here. It was right here. And, um, but I wanted to bring the weight forward and I wanted to lighten the, heli the, the multi-rotor a little bit. So what I did is I rearranged all my wires. This thing's only just barely long enough. And, uh, and then I built a new wiring harness so uh, that I can do this, which is pretty cool. And flip this back around. And you can see coming off the Hobby King power distribution board there, see that little JST, that little red JST connector? Um, that is a wiring harness that I built. That little red JST connector um, basically, uh, everything's grounded to the same common, uh, which is nice on this 12 volt system. So that's a good thing. And uh, basically that wiring harness then feeds power to this 12 volt camera, which produces a pretty decent uh, video. And I'll go ahead and uh, insert some video if I haven't already, so you can see it. But yeah, that camera produces decent video. And uh, um, that also splits off and runs the uh, transmitter. So um, it's pretty nice that that little board actually has a, uh, JST connector on it because um, really uh, really helps you uh, get 12 volts out, roughly 12 volts. You know, it's uh, from your battery when you need it. So, um, however, this quad is going away, and the reason why is because, despite my best effort, I cannot get the um, I cannot get the uh, jiggle out of the out of the GoPro. I, I've tried my best. Um, I have balanced the props, I've balanced the motors, um, I have built this uh, little, um, I built this little uh, <laughs> earplug shock mount and it, you know, it's, it, you would think that it would work really, really well, but uh, uh, it, it works okay. And then, um, so it was just this against the, the, the actual frame here. And then, uh, um, but I had some extra gyro tape which is that nice squishy, good squishy tape that you use for gyros. And I went ahead and uh, added this cup. Um, it's from a piece of uh, storage bin that I bought from the store specifically to cut up. And um, I turn the light back on. Um, and never mind, turn it back off. So uh, it seemed to help a little, I mean like maybe like 1% less jiggle. Um, and of course the, my camera is actually very poorly mounted. I mean, this is a terrible mount. I'm, it, I mean, it gets the job done, but uh, um, it's just not a good mount. It's not secure. It's just kind of mushed in there. Um, it's not always level. Um, sometimes it points a little down or up or whatever. So it's, it's just not super ideal, but um, it, it gets the job done. So what I'm actually going to do is um, I'm going to be rebuilding this quad with the uh, Iconic X FPV. Um, if you go to, um, I think it's quadcopter.us. You can read about the Iconic X FPV. Uh, here's a picture of it, and uh, I can't wait to build it. It's built very similar to the uh, QAV500 from FPV Manuals, 
And uh, those guys are really cool, by the way. Um, when I bought these, I bought these props from FPV Manuals. And they included a sticker, which I proudly put on my quad, and uh, I will be moving the sticker onto the new quad. Um, but uh, um, I uh, am very excited to build the QA or the sorry the iconic X FPV, uh, and I'm hoping that's going to get rid of a lot of the uh, the jiggle that I have. So. Um, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments, and uh, I'll do my best to answer them in a timely manner. This is a great frame. Um, it actually, for 55 bucks from a place like uh, Hobby Wing, um, I got mine on eBay. I just stumbled across it. I'm like, oh, that looks like the TBS Discovery frame. Um, and I uh, took a chance. I couldn't find really hardly any info on it at all, um, but uh, pretty happy with this frame in general, but uh, uh, just too much jiggle for me. Um, Maybe somebody who's better at balancing props or something like that could could get some more of the, the jiggle out. So um, I guess that's about it. I think I've said um about 4 billion times. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you later.